So Wildcard have actually finally responded to the whole undermeshing problem on the game. The new Community Crunch has just been released, Community Crunch 152. It's very late for me to be recording, but I really wanted to cover this video. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning while I'm recording this. It's pretty interesting information. There's lots of stuff to do with it. And I feel like finally they actually had to say something on this because the community is getting very angry now. That You know, there's been years of it. And ever since that whole situation with the Jack YouTuber, I feel like while kind of like being like, okay, we really, really need to address this issue. So I'm going to be going through all the news, everything they've said, and to see if we can pick out any positives from this to see if there's going to be some fixes in the future. And if you guys do enjoy this video, as always, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, they're just letting us know it as well in this community crunch that the Extinction Chronicles 5 update is going to be going live next week, um, which is October the 16th, which is a little bit earlier than I expected, which is great there, which is a new tech dino and stuff. But you guys have all come to this video for the big part which is their new de developer diaries um, thing where they talk about what's going on with Ark Survival Evolved and that this usually comes every month and as you can see this week's diary entry is brought to you by lead programmer Chris this week's dev diary is about undermeshing a hot button issue with our official server community rest assured that we are listening and hard at work on the issues that you have surfaced through our various channels we thought it would be worth taking an opportunity to share our thoughts on the issue, some of the reasons it exists and why it's so challenging to resolve. Now, I'm quite excited to read this to you guys because, you know, this is a huge issue with Ark. It's a massive issue why so many people have stopped playing, why it's destroying official servers and why it's just making the game just more broken because people are just getting sick and tired of it because it's just not fair. It's just cheating and you can literally destroy someone's base by cheating and this game has been released for way over a year and it's still not fixed. So let's just get straight in with this guys. It's going to be very long and if you just want to sit there, enjoy. Some of you guys may say, oh, this is boring, it's just reading, but I, you know, this is a huge issue issue and I'm just going to go through everything Wildcard have said. So, under meshing refers to the ability to get where you aren't supposed to by moving outside of the playable space. Almost every game, you know, has under meshing in some form. Most speed runs rely on under meshing. Let me just quickly uh, stop the video here at this point. I know this is a fact that there's under meshing in any in any game and um, it's just sometimes it's never found. In Ark is much of a bigger thing because you can actually, you know, the game is about being able to raid people, especially on PvP and then you, you know, get their loot and everything. Whereas on a game like Fortnite, where there's under meshing problems you guys may know about, it's not really something that they want to do because it's not going to help them win because the storm's going to come in anyway. Whereas Ark Survival Evolved, you can use it to get into people's bases and then get out, you know, get under the map, then get back out of the map, and it, you know, it just avoids all defenses. So, most speedruns, as I say, rely on undermeshing. For example, it's effect effectively impossible to solve completely, at least automatically. The approaches taken to prevent it are usually a trade-off between how much freedom you want the player to have and how complex your world is, and how much processing time you can afford to spend on physics. Generally, when there's an incident of meshing, it's caused by a bad collision setup improper level um, like which is holes in the map or a problem with the algorithm used to move the character through the world. In some instances you could place kill volumes in locations that you want to guarantee the player doesn't end up in but that isn't the global solution. So just to round up there what they're saying is people like myself I've definitely mentioned it before have said Right, why don't you just put a massive kill flat for a platform on, you know, underneath the map and, you know, that will stop it. But they're saying that this isn't a global solution. The collision setup for our objects varies based on their complexi complexity. Sorry if I say anything wrong. This is very late and I'm very tired, but I wanted to, uh, to uh, you know, tell you guys all of this stuff. For very simple objects, we use a basic primitive shape, box, sphere, capsule. Now, if you are someone that gets involved with modding, um, game creating, you know, development and stuff, you'll understand this a bit more. Some of this stuff may not mean anything to anyone that matches the shape of the object. 
It's very good if you're able to take this approach because, you know, the physics system can treat that individual ob object as a watertight, ensuring that the other physical object will never uh, end up inside of it. So they're, that, they're trying to explain it in the easiest way possible. I know this may be confusing and I will try and explain it, you know, in the easiest form because I'm not saying I've ever done game development, but I did try and get him into it and um, do some courses on it. But, you know, I I'm, don't really know much about it myself so I can't explain everything and that you'll always detect if you're already um, um, inside basically so when constructing uh, constructing a modern game however it is very likely that you will need to use shapes that are more interesting to look at and interact with more than a simple box or sphere in the game so you use mesh based collision mesh colli uh, collision treats the surface of the mesh as a collidable surface but it cannot be treated as a watertight, and the physics system cannot guarantee that you don't pass through it. You might ask why? Then don't um, don't you try to represent the larger object as a bunch of smaller watertight ones? We do that in a small number of instances, but quantity of primitives is also a major concern, so it is not feasible to do this for the entire world. Take the ground under your feet, for example. At any given moment, you'd be surrounded by thousands of primitives uh, to approximate the surface of natural looking ground. And yet it would be less smooth and, uh, than the pure mesh, in sh uh, mesh shape. In addition, a guarantee to not end up inside of a single body isn't a guarantee that you won't end up between them, even if you're tightly clumped, leading to more inst instances of getting stuck. So that was a massive bit to read through and I know many of you guys would have got lost in me talking through that. So what they're trying to explain is if you want to use, when you're creating a game like Ark Survival Evolved, it isn't a simple game like Minecraft. You, I'm not saying Minecraft is a simple game, but it was more simple. It wasn't, you know, it's not an in, um, like this crazy, crazy world. It still is a crazy world, but it's in block form. Within Ark you know you're what you're wanting to create this insane world this crazy world where you you need to use more complex stuff to be able to make the ground look nicer you know to make the mountains look good and if you didn't do that you would just have a cube world basically um and with this you have to use meshing and this is the huge problem with meshing because you can't you know people are always you can't make it physically unable to get through because it's just not possible at the moment and there's always going to be a way around it so let's get straight back into it anyway and i hope you guys are understanding this as as as, po as possible as possible i don't even know what i'm saying because as i said it's two o'clock in the morning and i'm tired when we lay um, out our levels we construct them in a way that is in interesting and optimize them for efficiency so that we can maximize quality and quantity what that means is generally the world outside of the space you're meant to play in is empty. We spend our resources on the spaces where players are at. In addition, we reuse assets many, many times, rotating a rock in different ways to make it look different before shoving it into the terrain at various different depths to mask the reuse and keeping it visu visually pleasing. Um, technically, the physics for these objects overlaps, and if you get past the surface of one, you'll stand on the next one down. While that sounds like it would help, it actually is the meat of the problem. Adding more meshes doesn't help, because once you get past one, you can get past the next one. That said, there will be many instances where we flagged the collision on an object incorrectly or left a minute hole that we could do and address through level design. So what they're saying is you can't just pr place a rock and then place another one below it to stop someone from getting through. The mesh is still a problem. Let's say they've got the climbing picks, which is a huge issue at the moment. They can get through that rock using the climbing picks. If they put another one behind that, that doesn't stop them from using the climbing picks to get through the other ones. So you can't just keep putting rocks and rocks and rocks because there's going to be someone out there in the world that it has the time to try and get through the world. If they just put loads and loads and loads of rocks beneath it, there's still going to be someone there who is going to spend 10 hours of their day going through rocks just so they can exploit the game. It's always going to happen, guys. It always is. Nearly every game uses custom physics for characters. Much of ours is built on the out-of-a-box simulation that you would get from the Unreal Engine. Uh, unfortunately for our players, our game is where the world is vast and complex, and players have the freedom to build many objects and have many dinos. Unfortunately for us, the pushes of all these algorithms to their breaking point, we've had to like 
rework things and add additional tests in many places that affect the simulation to improve our core player experience. In addition, we built many gameplay mechanics that don't exist out of the box. Wall climbing, for example, requires a completely new set of physics tests to understand the hug wall surface. Um, well, hug the wall surface, basically. When we set these up, we build them to be as flexible as possible, but it can be difficult to predict how the player base will use something when they get it in their hands. In many cases, this is a good thing. We're delighted with the creative things that our players do, but sometimes they're able to abuse mechanics in unintended ways. When we find problems with them, we have to find solutions that won't break the mechanic completely for the other many use cases. Sometimes an impossible feat. This is also why we aren't quick to completely disable a feature, we evaluate how much harm versus good it is doing across the entire experience. So what they're saying is when they create something, they, you know, they they all test it themselves, but that you know, there's probably ten of them in the studio. I mean there's obviously more than that, but let's just say there's ten of them in the studio, you create something and ten people review it. This game has hundreds of thousands of players currently. I wouldn't say millions anymore because it has, you know, it isn't as popular as it was for Extinction. There's possibly going to be millions on Extinction. Um, and, you know, they are the ones that test it out. So they release something for people to test. And if it, you know, because then they get way more than just 10 people, then, you know, then they can find out where there's problems. If there's huge problems, they can tweak things, they can change things. And that's what they like to do. And that's why they're saying they're happy with how creative their player base is because they can find out things that they wouldn't have found out if we they didn't have such a creative audience. So the next bit is we do use kill volumes at a broad scale, usually high in the air or far below the surface, far outside of the player space to segment specific areas. The reality though is that when someone is meshing, they're not usually out in that empty space around the world, they're running around on the insides of overlapping shapes or physical surfaces that are below the real surface. In order to implement kill boxes in these places, we'd have to go back to every location in the map and place a kill volume just below the surface that will kill someone that touches it. As with the terrain example above, it would require entirely too many objects to cover the entire world in these act like well to be absolutely perfect. In addition, a major downside to this approach is also the fact that it would detect and kill something that may not well may have a good reason to be below the mesh. Um, so um, on a well obviously on the giant snake, you just got killed by the kill volumes, misjudge where the surface is, and a bunch of players are being killed and losing their stuff for no reason. So what they're trying to sum up there is, um, let's say that giant snake, which I can't say the name of, which you guys will basilisk. I think it's, I think that's what it is. Um, let's say there's a kill volume underneath the map where they have tried to stop it from meshing. That could accidentally like glitch under the mesh and die, and then you could fall through and die and lose all your stuff, or just lose some sort of dino that you've worked so hard to get. So wildcard needs to be very careful because if they put these kill zones down. Then and you know and it doesn't fit properly or something glitches under the map or something, then the next problem is going to be people complaining because the kill zones are killing their teams or you know they're losing their stuff and everything. So they've got a problem and they've got to weigh it up fifty fifty. What's the be best you know the best decision for the game? As with all aspects of making a game, it's a basically a balancing act. We try to spend our time on the things that are most valuable to many of our players as possible which means attacking holes in the world um, in the world in waves and making algorithm algorithms sorry changes can even speak when it becomes obvious that they are having a large enough negative effect on the experience for our players the reality is that there is no silver bullet no automatic solution so it continues to be a problem in our game and many others continue to fight for, uh, throughout their lifetimes Recently, we fixed a bunch of holes across all of the maps and did a pass at removing climbing pick exploits. Going forward, our best bet is to remain just like, you know, open-minded about resolving issues as they arrive, arise and improving the experience over time. The good news is that we're solving hard um, them like hard problems and exploits like these, um, you know, are becoming more interesting, but they're trying to tackle them as much as possible. So that is some very interesting information and I know I struggled reading that 
But um, I am literally about to fall asleep. But I'm still managing to be strong. But you don't, it doesn't matter about me going to sleep. It matters about what they have said in this video. And, um, well, from what they've said, not in this video, in this post. So what they've said, really, what I've got from this, is they've really explained the problem they're having. And I completely understand it. I'm happy they've said this. They've needed to mention this for ages. But really what they've said is... Guys, you're just going to have to get on with the problem of meshing and just enjoy the game as much as you can until we can find a resolve for it. I worry quite a lot now about Extinction, what's going to happen with that, because it's going to be one of the, well, if not the biggest map we've had so far on Ark. And if that means they've tried to make it look nicer, you know, the map more pleasing and stuff, is that mean, Is that going to mean there's going to be so many places to mesh? Like, that is really what I'm worried about, and is that just going to be the end of Ark? Um, and I'm glad, as I said, Wild kind of responded to this, and I understand they must be going through so many problems, because so many other games, they have meshing in their game, as they said, and as I mentioned about Fortnite earlier, but no one really needs to do that, getting under the map, because it's not really going to benefit them. If someone goes under the map in Fortnite, as I said, they're going to be stuck under there, and they're not going to be able to come back up. And then the zone comes in and they're going to lose anyway. That doesn't benefit them. In loads of other games, going under the map isn't going to benefit them. You play a single player game, you go under the map. That's not going to benefit you. You've got to go back to an old save. But with Ark, it can benefit you because it's a survival game, especially for PvP. And you can get in and go under and steal things. There must be a way around this. And we as a community, community need to think of things to recommend to Wildcard. The one thing I really feel like Wildcard do wrong, yes, it was great today that they've responded, they've said something about this, but they need to talk to their community more. They need to get information, they need to speak to them, not through emails, not through long processes like that where you submit a support ticket or anything like that. Great, it's great to have that. But Wildcard need to speak to the community on Twitter, fast responses, have a live chat, get things moving with the game. I know they're not a billionaire company. They still did make a lot of money, bear in mind, from Ark, but they're not a billionaire company, and I know things are tough. But they need to do the simple things, such as a live chat, get things rolling, hire more staff. I know it's not cheap to hire staff. I completely understand that. But from the money they've made, they must have enough to hire someone, bring someone in, bring more staff in to do the simple jobs. You know, you could just, like... You know, I, I know I'm saying a lot of things. I don't have a massive, uh, you know, millionaire company like they do, and I, I might not be saying the right things. But I'm just saying from what I see, and the problems that they have right now is affecting their game massively. And I'm surprised they've only just said something now because this has been affecting Ark never like in a bad way for a long time. And I'm shocked they're only saying it now when they've lost so many players. But at least they have finally said something. In the comment section down below, let me know what you think about this, guys. It's interesting. I don't know if this means meshing is never going to be, you know, removed. They did say something about the climbing pick there, saying they've been trying to fix exploits, but it doesn't look like they're ever going to remove it. So we'll see what happens. If you did enjoy today's video, drop a like. It really does mean a lot to me. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. I'm off to get some sleep. See you guys later.